communication skills are fundamental. As a young engineer, uh, one of my first bosses uh, told me if I could do a calculation but couldn't communicate it, then my career was uh, not going to go anywhere, quite frankly. He made that comment more succinctly than what I just have. Uh, if we cannot, as engineers, both communicate and uh, also hear what others are saying, then we will not achieve our potential. We have to take our own creativity, our design, uh, our calculations, our thinking, and we have to be able to help others understand the why of what we are doing. Whether we like it or not, uh, engaging with people is at some point in time going to be part of a project. So in this day and age, uh, getting the buy-in of the communities and the organisations that are working with you is important. So. What I see as, I suppose, best practice engineers is this, in this space is people who can change their language for the audience in which they are engaging with. People who try to put themselves in the shoes of the people who, whom, through whom they're engaging with. Um, in its simplest form, it's almost a customer service approach to doing your work. What does that person as my potential customer expect from me? In my experience, engineers are poor in verb and written communication. And that's, I think, some of the best trained people I've worked with are lawyers. And lawyers are trained to write succinctly, clearly, and well, and engineers are not. And I think we underestimate the power of a really simple, clear, concise, easy to understand written communication. And so I would encourage both the training at the university and also just the emphasis on good written communications needs to be upped. Um, engineers are really bad and there's no reason we can't train engineers to be much better written communicators. Also verbal communication, you can help improve people's skills but learning to present well, to be able to influence well, that's really, really important. Communication skills are, are everything. Um, regardless of the size of the team you're working in, even if you're a lone engineer, you're going to be communicating with your customers. Um, in a team, you'll be, so as I said, various parts of a team are looking after various projects and to make sure those projects go well, you have to communicate very well with your team. Indigenous or uh, Maori related issues in New Zealand are critical. Uh, the Maori are treaty partners. Uh, and so from a New Zealand perspective, not just an Auckland Council perspective, uh, their world view and the things that they value uh, should be important to all of us. From my point of view, it's very important that we bring those through into the way that we design, the way that we consult and engage, uh, and the value that we place on things like water and air and land. Very, very important. Uh, um, we've got operations in Canada, same as New Zealand, uh, very important indigenous populations and cultures that we need to be very mindful of. And we involve them in all our projects where we can. Uh, whether it might be consulting in terms of the uh, design, the aesthetic, or, or actually the functionality. Um, water treatment is an example. There's, there's uh, lots of uh, cultural things to consider when you're discharging water. Māori issues are very important for our business. As to my Aotearoa, we're for New Zealand. We are a society for which the Māori is a really, really critical part of who we are in New Zealand. We are trying to increase our Māori awareness and our appreciation of iwi um, across our business. Um, and working with Māori and communities is really critical. We have very shared values. We've been in a business for over 150 years. So the Māori, we have long-term assets. We invest for the long term, so do they. And we do a lot of work to make sure that with the iwi land that we cross and the parties we are involved with, we work um, in cooperation with them. They are a critical stakeholder for us. The challenge is the world is changing at an increasing pace. If you're not keeping pace with that change, if you're not teaching yourself new skills, whether it's technology, whether it's around the politics of the world, whether it's around what's happening to our environment or socially, then my challenge back to all engineers is you will lose relevance rapidly. Uh, so to be relevant, you need to change and adapt yourself. You need to learn new skills constantly. One thing in this world uh, you're certain of is change. We're living in a very changing technological era um, we have no idea what's on the horizon. So um, upskilling uh, yourself, um, trying to, to predict, I suppose, or anticipate some of the, the long-term horizons 
and the changes that are coming are really important. So engineers not only have to be just aware of the engineering sector, they have to be aware of what's happening geopolitically within the world. You know, what's happening in terms of sustainability? What's happening in terms of resource management, such as water or fresh air or, or clean, clean and safe food? Because all these aspects, right, are important in terms of where an engineer can bring his or her technical skill um, to bear. And so if impact and making a positive difference is one of the things that drives you as an engineer, then you need to be aware, aware of those settings around you, not only domestically but internationally. And so I would recommend to um, any engineer to, you know, keep up to play with current events right across the spectrum. You know, almost, um, you know, don't go and do another degree necessarily, but, you know, be aware of, of politics, both with a big P and a small P. Um, have groups of people around you, uh, mentors, for example, who, can, who have been there and done that and who can help you and advise you and navigate this, this world and then you know what skills you need to have. You won't always have uh, uh, someone shouting you 100% of your time and so you'll be, often be left to, uh, to look at a problem and work out a solution yourself with, with some safety around that when you're, you, when you're just starting out. Uh, independent thought's really important. Um, I think that uh, no project's the same, they're all different. And so you might not actually ha have a, a solution from before, so you'll need to sit down and actually nut something out. But actually that's, that's what's really, I think, exciting and, and stimulating about our profession, is, is that you do have a chance to apply original thought quite a lot. Coming out of university, you just know a, little, a lot about not much and life is about continuing to pick up new skills, to learn, to have that insatiable appetite, curiosity to keep learning. And I think that's even more important um, in today with the pace of digital change, the pace of technology. I have no idea what my business is gonna look like in 10 years time, 20 years time. I know it's gonna be different, and I know that I have to help our company position, be more agile, be learning all the time so that we can adapt to that future. So. Keeping that curiosity and that thirst to keep learning is absolutely essential. Financial management for the engineer is critical. An engineer responsible for delivering a program or a project is not only responsible for the outcome, uh, which is something built or created or delivered, but ensuring that it's delivered on time and on budget. So if you don't understand financial management in that sense, then you've weakened your offer as an engineer. You need to understand it. It's really important uh, in any project that you have a, you know, a, a good sort of um, uh, overview of costs, um, and uh, you know, making sure that you're getting the best value for for money. So having that skill is is very important. Um, and one of the things that uh, we find is important too is that when you're out engaging with different communities, that you take into account their costs. Their costs, not only the real costs in terms of um, uh, the part that they play in the project, but if you're doing engagement with people, um, often it's their time to attend different meetings, to uh, participate in projects, and so it's really important too to take into account the costs of the communities in which you're serving, and sometimes that's you know dollars and cents, uh, and, but there's also other costs attached to that. In our company, um, we have three streams. We have a, we have a technical stream, we have a, prof uh, a management stream, of which I'm part of right now, uh, and we have a project management stream. So the technical stream, having a commercial financial awareness is important because you need to, you need to ultimately be responsible for your own time and budgets and things. Uh, but it becomes more important with project management, and a lot of engineers actually go into project management, and a lot of engineers end up doing partly project management, partly technical, uh, and then it becomes even more important in management. But I think at a, at a basic level, um, if, for instance, if an engineer wants to become chartered with the Engineering New Zealand, uh, they will still need to have, a, even if they're mainly a technical engineer, uh, they'll still need to, have a, need to have a basic level of commercial and financial understanding. It's one of the core competencies.